43. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, so we have SNCO4 liquid, which will yield SNCO4 gas. So it looks like we're vaporizing SNCO4 at this temperature, really high temperature, 200 degrees Celsius. Now, from this information, we're trying to find a equilibrium constant. That's a capital K value. And there's a lot of them, right? There's Ka, there's Kb, there's Kc, there's Keq, there's Kp, and the list goes on and on. Does it really matter which K we're, we're finding? No. I could probably guess that this is going to be a Kp value because I do see gases here, and usually with gases come pressures. But there's only one formula that really links an equilibrium constant with the temperature. And that's the formula that I have written down here. So let's pull this up. Okay. Now for trying to solve for an equilibrium constant, this is equal to the E button, which is on the calculator, right? And the E is raised to three variables. You have delta G, so that's the Gibbs free energy, R and T. Let's see what we have. Let's start with the R value. Now, they didn't give us an R value, but that's because the R value is always constant, right? In this case, since we're dealing with energies, right, Gibbs free energy delta G, the R value is going to be 8.314. Now, the units for R is joules per mole times Kelvin. So this unit will dictate what other units are allowed, specifically joules and specifically Kelvin. Now, for the temperature, it has to be in Kelvin. Literally, there's a K here. But ugh, they gave it to us in Celsius. But that's okay. I could turn my my uh, 200 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, right? Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273, right? More specifically, you add 273.15, which is what I'll do. So 273.15 plus 200 is 473.15. Okay, now that's good. So we have basically the two out of the three variables. But now what's delta G? They didn't give it to me. So maybe some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, I can find a delta G notch, right? Notch means standard, this little degree sign up there. So I can go on the back of a textbook, look up the appendix values, get those delta Gs for the products and the reactants, subtract them, and plug it in. But uh-uh, those delta G values are only specifically for room temperature, aka 25 degrees Celsius. We are not at that temperature, so we can't use those numbers. Ugh, don't you love when that happens? <laughs> now we have to find another way. So you say to yourself, okay, what other formula does delta G and a T have in common? And that's the second formula that's down here. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. But in order for this formula to work, I have to know a delta H value and I have to know a delta S, right? H is enthalpy, the heat, and S is entropy, which is the randomness of the molecules. That's when we can go in the back of the textbook and get those appendix values. And that's exactly what I did. So I went in the back of the textbook and I found out all the delta H values and the S values, because now we're going to use our formulas to find out What's the overall delta H of the whole uh, formula? And what's the whole delta S for the whole balanced equation? Let's start with H, right? The formula that we're going to use is this right here, right? Delta H equals the sum. That's this little symbol here, the sum. That's addition. So it's the sum of all the products minus the sum of all the reactants. So are these numbers going to change or are they going to be the same? Well, that comes from the balanced equation. Just notice your uh, coefficients. In this case, there was only one SNCL4 and one SNCL4. We're just doing a phase change here. So essentially, you would multiply those values by the number. But in this case, they're going to be the same. Now, generally, you would have to add up your products and add up your reactants. But on both sides, you only have one product and one reactant. So the numbers are going to be the same. So the overall for the reactant side is going to be the negative 50, a 511.3. And the overall for the products is the negative 471.5. And now I'm going to just plug those numbers in. So let's see, delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the products, which is negative 471.5. 
minus the reactants, which is a negative 511.3. Delta H for the whole entire reaction is, let's plug this in, negative 471.5 minus a negative 511.3. Just want to make sure, oops, and there we go. Just make sure that you plug it in correctly because then the whole question is going to be off. Let's just make sure, negative 471.5 minus a negative. That looks good to me. Okay. And now we have 39.8 units for this is kilojoules. Now, these numbers that you multiply are moles. So if the moles are on the bottom here and these are moles on the top, they cancel. So that's your first number. Let's do the same thing for delta S because we can use the same formula, that's this one, for the delta H, but now I can erase all of the H values, so bye 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 and bye bye and I just put an S here. So S, S, and S, but it's products minus reactants. You do the same exact thing. So just for good practice, take these values, times them by the coefficients, but in this case they're going to be the same because they're times by one. So the overall delta S for the reactants is 258.6. The overall delta S for the products is 365.8. And now let's just plug that in. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals products 365.8 minus 258.6. Delta S... For the whole entire reaction equals 365.8 minus 258.6. 365.8, 258 258.6 looks good to me. 107.2. Units here, well, if we look back here, it's joules per mole times Kelvin. But remember, we multiply these numbers by the coefficients. Those are the mole values. So the mole will cancel. So it's just joule per Kelvin. Okay, so now we have these two answers. So we have our delta H and we have our delta S. We found out the temperature conversion in Kelvin earlier. So now we can use the delta G value. But here's the thing. Delta H is in kilojoules. Delta S is in joules. I have to have the same unit. Now, whether I convert the kilojoules into joules or if I convert the joules into kilojoules, technically you would both get just the same answer, but just in different units for delta G. But the question is, which one is better? Well, let's go back to the, the formula that we have to use at the end of the day, right? I have to plug in that delta G value. And remember, the R value tells me what those units are. The R value said, I can only use a joule value. So in this case, I'm going to take my kilojoules and I'm going to convert it into joules because then everything is in joules and everyone's happy. Kilojoule to joule, you just times by a thousand. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it to the left three spots. So this would basically be the same thing as three, nine, eight with two zeros. So 39,800 joules. Okay, let's plug this in. So I'm just gonna take this, zoom, get rid of this, bye-bye. And now let's see, delta G equals plug in that joule value for delta H, so 39,800 minus the temperature, which was 473.15 from before. And then I'm just gonna times by the S value, so 107.2. I could plug this all into the calculator in one shot, and the calculator will understand what function to do first. So I'm going to say 39800 minus 473.15 times the answer that I had from before and press enter. Okay, so my delta G value is exothermic, not exothermic, spontaneous, right? It's a negative value. So negative 10,921.68, and that would be in kilojoules. Now, notice how I didn't round, because this isn't the answer. We only try to round at the answer. So I'm going to use the whole number 
to plug in. So negative 10,921.68. Now I have all these vari you know, these variables, they have a number. So let's just plug it in. K equals the E on the calculator, all raised to a negative fraction. The delta G that we just found out was negative 10,921.68. And then those are divided by the two values, right? The 8.314 and then the 473.15. Now, what I would do is I would just simplify, right? E raised to what number? Simplify this. Then I can take the E value and just raise it to that one number. Now, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm not even going to worry about the negative. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just press enter to just grab that number down. I'll times it by negative one, just to kind of start with the positive. And now I'm going to incorporate. So I'm going to pick that number. I'm going to divide by 8.314. And now if I want to keep the 473.15 in the denominator, and I'm not using um, parentheses, I'm just going to press again, divide to tell the calculator, hey, it's it's in the denominator, it's not in the, in the numerator. And I'm just checking to make sure that I have all the correct numbers, 8.314, 473. Yep, we're good. Press enter. So I have 2.77639, et cetera, et cetera, right? Remember to use the whole number, right? The whole number that's on the calculator. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say second LN because that's where the E button is. And I'm just going to pull that whole number and then press enter. Sig figs seems like the R value is the lowest amount of sig figs. Um, so we'll take that. So it should be 16.06. And no units for equilibrium constant. And that's it. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Thank you for coming to this YouTube channel for your educational needs. Um, thank you for being part of the, this community. It's really great that, you know, comments are coming in saying that, you know, this channel is really helping you guys out. So I'm really happy about that. My brother is super happy. We're so happy that, you know, we can help you guys out. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.